Hello everyone, and welcome to our next Unity video about collision detection. So today we're going to be talking about a specific component in Unity called a collider. Colliders come in two forms, and I want to examine both of these forms today. The first form that we're already familiar with is a collision collider. This is what a collider is treated as by default. Now if we look at any object that we've brought into the scene that has shape, we can notice in the collider section, or in the uh, component section, there is already a collider component added to these shapes for us. And there are many different colliders that we can add. We have three different ones in this scene. Some of them are treated as built-in shapes. For example, we have a sphere collider. So a sphere collider is a collider who determines collisions based on a spherical shape. Obviously, that's the shape that is attached to our sphere. A cube collider, or, or a box collider, is applied to a cube because an imaginary box is drawn around the shape, and that is what Unity uses to determine collision, is if you have touched that box. The plane uses a more sophisticated collider called a mesh collider. A mesh collider actually maps the shape of the object that you are attached the collider to and it creates a collider from it. So mesh colliders are really good for complex shapes or shapes where really really fine tuned collision is important. The problem with mesh colliders is that the more complicated a shape is the more computational power is required to determine if a collision has happened. So mesh colliders generally perform worse than a box collider or a sphere collider. But all of these colliders are just individual components on it, our objects, and there's nothing special about them. If I wanted to, I could delete my mesh collider on my plane, and I could add any of these collider shapes. So you can see that we have some other shapes here. We have a circle collider, um, a capsule collider, and I'm going to choose box collider. And by adding a box collider, so the box collider in this case they've added, it looks like they've already mapped it to my object. They've made it 10 by 10 by 2.2, .2, which is about the height of the um, plane. So I'm going to change this height for a second to 5. If I do that, you can see that the imaginary box representing my collider has gotten much bigger. I'm actually going to drop it down to 3. So it's still pretty big, but I think now our sphere is outside of it. Okay, so let's watch what happens using a collider that is the wrong size. So if I press play now, I can see that my sphere sits above my plane because it thinks that it is running into the plane's collider. Um, or in fact, it is running into the plane's collider. It thinks it's running into the plane, but in fact, it is only hitting the collider. So if we drop this back down to 2.2, Oh, that can't be what it was. What was it before? 0.2, maybe? Let's do 0.2. Um, if we, the closer we can get the collider to the dimensions of our object, the more realistic it'll look. So there's an important thing, we discussed this a little bit with rigid bodies, but there's an important thing to understand about collision colliders. So by default, an object with a rigid body, like our sphere, let's put this here, um, rigid bodies are always stopped by collision colliders. So by default, anything that has a collider on it, these cubes, this plane, if I drop my shape into this scene and then I try to move into any of these objects, because my sphere is a rigid body, my sphere will not be able to go inside of them. My sphere is stopped by anything that has a collider attached to it. But that is only true of collision colliders. So then what are we talking about when we talk about our other type of collider? Our other type of collider is called a trigger. Trigger colliders cause an event to happen, but they are not actually physically taking up space. So let's test it out. Let's take this cube, and underneath the box collider, there is a um, checkbox called is trigger. If I check that, this collider is no longer acting um, as a collision collider it now acts as a trigger collider. So you can see that my sphere is able to pass right through it. 
No longer is this cube acting in such a way that it's physically taking up space. The cube is now designed to cause an event to happen when the sphere touches the cube. And we've got some ways of coding to that. So let's talk about the three methods at our disposal. Let's get rid of this. You, all right, trigger colliders use the following methods. And these methods are methods that we need to fill in. They're kind of like the start and update method, but they're specific to trigger colliders. So the first is called uh, void on trigger enter, and that takes a collider object, basically the thing that you're hitting. And then we also have, I'm just going to copy paste this because it's faster. We also have on trigger exit, and finally, on trigger stay. So as long as soon as an object enters, an, as soon as the this object enters another object, that object is um, calls the on trigger enter method. And again, we have to fill these methods out. When it leaves, it calls on trigger exit, and as long as our objects are touching one another, on trigger stay is called. So these are the three options that we have for allowing custom functionality to happen while our sphere is touching another object. So what might we, we use this for? Well, one thing, I mean, collision detection is useful all over in uh, game development, but one thing that collision detection in this fashion may typically be used for is either scoring or avoiding enemies. Um, so we may have a scenario where if you touch this thing, you die, or if you touch this thing, you get points. But we're going to look at a very, very simple example right now that just involves having the other object disappear when the sphere touches it. So the sphere right now has a velocity script attached to it. This is the script that is controlling all of the movement for the sphere. However, the sphere is not our trigger. This cube is our trigger. So we're going to create a script, and we are going to call this cube trigger. And in cube trigger, we are going to um, add one of these methods. Okay. Now keep in mind this is a separate method, so this does not belong in start, nor does it belong in update. I am going to add the on trigger enter method. And remember that other in this case is just a variable name. I could call this whatever I wanted, I could call it sphere, doesn't matter. The type of object is a collider. So what's going to happen when something enters our cube? Well, one thing that we could do, and one thing that we're going to do right now, is we could have a message displayed to the screen. So we could say, print, something touched me. And let's see if our simple line of code will work. So we're going to attach this cube trigger to this cube. So it now has some trigger code attached to it. If we look at our console. There we go. So I, I had an error. I'm going to cut it out in the video, but I had an error where I had put a lowercase o here uh, because of my old Java habits instead of a capital O. So that's why um, it wasn't working a moment ago. But now we can see whenever I enter the cube, I get the something touched me print statement in my console. So let's have this do something a little bit more interesting. Why don't we uh, have the cube disappear whenever it is touched by sphere? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take away my print code here, and instead we're just going to kill the game object associated with this script. We're going to use the, a new method here that we haven't used before called destroy. So we're going to say destroy game object. And this should cause, so game object, kind of like transform, game object is a built-in variable that represents the game object attached to this script. So in this case, it belongs to the cube. So let's take a look at our scene and see what happens. 
I'm going to roll my sphere over, and the square pops out of existence. So we can see how, once we learn how to keep track of score and all that stuff, we can see how the cubes uh, could act as points that we have to, to gather, and by touching them, we could add code that increments a score and also causes the cube to disappear. So let's cover one more thing. Uh, we're going to talk about colliding with tags. So we can add a tag to an object to check collisions. And what tags allow us to do is to make sure that the right object is touching us. So let's say we were making a game that had cubes and spheres and something else. And let's say that the cube is only supposed to disappear when it is touched by a sphere, but not by anything else. One of the ways that we can handle this is by giving our sphere a tag. So we have some built-in tags that are uh, put in here for us. But I'm going to add a tag called um, Layer Sphere. And this tag is going to apply to the sphere being controlled by the player. So if I select my sphere, I go to Tag, and I say Player Sphere. Now I have a way of checking if the cube is being touched by the um, sphere. So let's see what that looks like. So if we go into our code, instead of just destroying the game object, I want to check if the sphere is touching the cube. So I'm going to say if the other object, remember that other refers to the thing that we're colliding with. So in this case, other should be the sphere. Other dot game object dot tag equals um, player sphere then we want to destroy the game object otherwise we don't want anything to happen so let's check this out Saved my work. Let's play our game. Now I'm going to roll my sphere over, and we can see that the cube still disappears. Okay, fine and dandy, but let's make sure that our tag system actually works. Let's go to the sphere and change its tag. Let's remove it so now it's untagged. And let's check to make sure that the cube doesn't disappear. And I can see that the cube stays where it is. So my code is only allowing my, my cube to be destroyed if it is touched by the object with the proper tag. And tags are a really great way to manage collision detection, to be sure that we are colliding with the objects we mean to collide with. It also allows us to demonstrate different behavior based on the object we are colliding with. So if I had a sphere and I had other cubes, I could change how it interacts with spheres versus how it interacts with cubes just by creating separate if statements for separate tags. So hopefully this, guy, this video gave you guys a good view to get started, uh, some good information to get started with on writing custom collisions. We'll be working on adding to our maze game um, next class using collision detection. Thanks for watching.